Hey, Joe Gilder here from Home Studio Corner with more videos about Studio One. I want to talk to you today about the click. Now, if you come from another system like Pro Tools, um, they have what's called a click track, where you create an auxiliary track or even an audio track, and you insert the click, or another word for that is metronome, plug-in on the track. And then you set it up, you know, play quarter notes, um, and so that will make me happy, okay? So, and you're playing along to that. So I'm not going to get into a conversation of whether you should or shouldn't record to a click. I'm assuming if you found this video, you want to know how to set it up in Studio One. So the click is simply a metronome. That's important to remember because that's what they call it in Studio One. You'll notice down here, metronome, and then on your output channels, you'll see that there is a metronome shaped button, okay? That's really important. So how the click works is it's tied to the tempo of your song. So this song is at 166 BPM, and if we hit play, we can't hear a click. Why? Because the click is not on. So there's a couple ways you have to turn the click on. First, you have to engage it here. So if you hover over this metronome dealy bob, dealy bob you'll see that it says metronome C. That means press the letter C on your keyboard to turn it on. Now we hit play, and guess what? We still can't hear it. Why? Because now we have to tell what channels to listen to the metronome. So, for example, in this mix, I just showed it, did it, my last video was about doing headphone mixes. We've got a headphone mix here on channels 3 and 4, and then here's my main output over here, channels 1 and 2. Let's say I want to listen to the click through the main channels. Well, I just click on this fella right here. Now the click is on just on this channel. So if I press play, guess what? Beautiful. Sounds amazing. Now what if I want that to be at a different level? Maybe I don't want it quite so loud. I just want to hear it kind of in the background. There's no channel. We're not doing an actual channel with our click on it like we do in most systems. So what do we do? Well, you actually have a fader here that allows you to adjust the volume of the click itself. So that way, if I'm recording somebody else, I can have the click in my headphones or I can turn it on and off depending if I want to hear it without affecting them. So for example, here's the click. I'm being, being sent to the singer, okay? And I'll switch over inputs on my board so we can hear her mix. Then I'll switch back to mine. Clipping, that's bad. Um, so that's that way I can give her her own click, and I don't have to listen to it, and I can adjust it up and down. Okay, so that's a really simple way to set up a click for most recording sessions, especially if you're just recording yourself. You'll just want your click coming out your main outputs, one and two. Turn it up and down, and then what's really cool is you don't have to keep coming over here and clicking it on and off. Let's say you recorded a take and you want to just listen back without the click pounding in your ears. You don't have to worry about that because as soon as you just press the letter C on the keyboard, it turns it off. You'll notice this little thing will light up down here, turning it on and off. Really easy to turn it on and off. Okay, now there are a couple of settings which is kind of nice. If you hover over here, you can see them. You can turn pre count on, which is basically pre roll, which uh, just lets you in a few, sh I think maybe two bars before the, the it starts recording. I never use it. I'm sure it's helpful, but I don't use it. So here's the metronome setup. This I do use quite a bit. So this allows me to uh, d choose the sound. There's quite a few sounds here. Uh, that we can use for our click sound. So find one that you're maybe happier with. Uh, but then you have the option of having an accent beat, and this is just a fader level. So if you want it to click louder on the beat one of the bar, then it will, and the rest will be down. Um, let me do that for you. Let me turn all the music off so you can just hear it. Burnt. Okay. So that's with an accent. If we do this, There's still a bit of an accent because these are two different sounds. If we change them to the exact same sound, now it will sound the same from beat to beat. So the way I like to do it is have two different sounds. The logical one for beat one, and then the logical two a little bit quieter for the rest of the beats of the bar. Dum, 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 dum. Now, if you want off beats, if you need more divisions in your beat, then you can turn this one up. Really simple, just like an old drum machine, like a Dr. Beat or something. You just turn them up to whatever you need. Um, here's where you set your pre-count or pre-roll. You can turn it on or off, or switch between the two. I don't know the difference because I never use it. Um, 
and you can repeat the accents, click and play, click and pre-count only. So here's a neat thing. If you do a lot of recording and you don't want to have to keep pressing C to turn the click on and off, you can turn this off. Now, if I hit play, there's no click. But if I record enable a track, which I don't have any set up with inputs, and then I hit record, it'll there'll be a click there while I'm recording. And then when I go back to playback, there won't be a click. I typically leave it this way because a lot of times I want to hear what I recorded against the click. And so I'll leave this on and I'll just turn the click off and on, on and off with my C button on my keyboard. So pick whichever way works best for you. Also, there's a render track. Let's say you're done and you want to send this off to somebody else and you'd like them to actually have a click track rendered, an actual audio file in your session. Well, before you'd have to do some crazy routing to make that happen. Well, now in version three, um, you can render it either from start to end or the loop range and boom click it I've actually never done this I forgot it existed um, but it's helpful especially if you're sending it, sending it to someone else without a DAW and you'll see down here there's a track now called click and if we zoom in on it you will notice that it is literally the click recorded so now I have a recorded click which this is helpful for a couple reasons and this is kind of a bonus tip one thing let's say you're recording a song and, and there's a uh, the song slows down at the end so there's like a retardando at the end well you don't really like to hear a click while you're trying to slow down and if you have a good engineer who's running the system he'll just turn the click off you know click on here or press C right at the end of the song so that you don't have to worry about that but what if you're recording yourself and you can't reach over and turn it off this is a great example a great way to do that so we'll turn the click off in our session we've rendered it to its own track so if we solo this and we'll listen there's the click right there on its own channel. We have our own volume control for it if that's what we want. And then here at the end of the song, we actually did this on this song. The last couple bars of the song, they slow down, which sounds like this. Let me turn the music back on. Let's do this. Why am I not hearing anything? Oh, the band is routed to the vocals. That's not that's weird. See how everybody slowed down? Well, the click is super annoying at that point. Since we've rendered it, we can do this. Okay, at bar 139 is where they start the slowdown. So we'll do this. We'll cut it, and we'll just hit Shift M to mute this region. Now guess what? The click goes away. Now some people would want to really get nerdy and automate that so that they automate the tempo. They get the tempo track up here and they actually write in tempo changes to make it coincide with the click. For things like this at the very end of the song, I don't care. And for songs that you want to have different tempos within the song, you can certainly do that. I've not done it, so I'm not going to really speak to it. I like to just keep things the same tempo. But here it goes. This works wonderfully for stuff like this. Easy peasy. And you can also do things like write automation there to have it go down, um, or just do this. Render it and then mute where you don't want to click to be there, and you're golden. Now always remember when it's time to bounce out your song, you want to come down here and mute your click, or when you send it to your wife to listen to this great mix that you just made and there's a click going all the way through, she'll wonder what's wrong with you. So there you go. All right, I covered more click tips than I thought I would on this video, so I hope it was insanely helpful for you. And thanks for watching. My name is Joe Gilder from homestudiocorner.com. Head over there to check out more of my free PreSonus videos, plus a lot of other really groovy stuff. See you in the next video.